So Kicker, K-Y-C-K-R, Kicker as we pronounce it, has a globally unique set of capabilities where it provides automated KYC for businesses. KYC means know your customer. And to talk to those unique capabilities, the foundation of the business, Kicker has integrated and connected through to over 150 of the business registers around the world. And when you're making a decision about who is a customer as a business customer, the information in a business register, like ASIC, whatever the case may be, is a critical part of the KYC process. So our unique capabilities is our connection to those multiple registers around the world. Plus also critically, we don't copy the data from the registers. We look into the register at the time of the KYC decision and we use the information direct from the source that's the most compliant source as far as KYC is concerned. And that's unique, nobody else does that. So the business itself, its old model was a model where you go there, you use people to make decisions. The new model is all about automation and that's really been, only been in place the last year. So our cornerstone client in automation is through our partner Dell Services and our client is Bank of Ireland. Bank of Ireland, the first client that we've worked with where they've established and are looking to further establish automation and how they make KYC decisions for new customers. And the important thing about Bank of Ireland is we've not just helped them with their new customers, their whole existing customer loan book with business customers, we've done a full cleanse and remediate of that book which means for the first time ever they can say their book is compliant from a regulatory perspective and also if there's any change to any of the key information that's relevant to KYC veracity for each of their business clients we automatically supply an update to ensure it maintains liveliness as far as KYC is concerned. So Bank of Ireland are also classically different now in using automation our business model, we get paid per click. We get paid for every business record we cleanse, we remediate. Anytime there's a change of address for that business or a director, we automatically get paid for each of those events. We feed through to their systems. And every new business customer that comes on board to the bank, we get paid to help onboard those customers. So when you look at the competitors, there are different categories. There's the old incumbents like the Dun & Bradstreet's, the experience where the old model is we would have went to their portal or ordered a report on a business, would have read through that printed report and made a KYC decision. Who are they? Where are their directors? Who are their material shareholders? We got that from the reports. Now, that world just doesn't work anymore. You need automation as I've highlighted before. So the Dun & Bradstreet's have issues because they can't supply automation, number one. And number two, as I've mentioned before, their data is copied. So it's got no veracity in it from a KYC perspective and is non-compliant from a, a KYC decision. So the incumbents, what they really are is an opportunity for us. We look to supply our solutions to the incumbents. And that's just a small part of what the Dun & Bradstreet's the experience do. They have lots of other sectors they're in. In the new market, the competitors are different. The competitors are many companies around the world, kycnet.com as an example, where you go to them and your business, they will have a predefined KYC pack that says whether you are KYC compliant with respect to anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing. The issue with a lot of these new businesses, what sits behind them is the incumbents supplying their data. So the data has no veracity in it and also the KYC pack becomes stale as soon as it's produced. So to the best of our knowledge, what we do, we do uniquely globally. Indeed, in part of our pre-IPO DD process, we had an independent expert assess our capabilities to be unique and our prospectus highlights that full report from this company, Tower 81, in, in Europe. Across the last year, a lot of the new model capabilities around automation is a very new thing and that's been driven by the market. Prior to that, the HSBCs, for example, through 36,000 people are trying to resolve their KYC issues globally. 
So this new model is really only coming into course now with our existing clients who participated in our old model across the last six to 12 months. And what we need in order to service that is certainly more tech capabilities. So this is a business where we are a technology company. We're trying to stay away from the people side of trying to process KYC. So we need to beef out our tech capabilities in our tech team. But more importantly, the predominant aspect of the investment in this business is around sales and expansion globally. We're spinning plates now for the opportunity at hand associated with some of the clients and prospects we're talking to. Certainly, you know, the funds will be used to, you know, in a very organic fashion and bringing in and increasing our sales capability. We're going to do this in a judicious fashion. So Europe, we're getting a very senior guy to head up the delivery and the sales there. And we know who he is. We know his capabilities and he's an expert in this space. Once we have that working and engaging some of the agreements that have the annuity type revenue that I've talked about before with the prospects that I've talked about before, then we'll start to beef out further our sales representation in Europe. We'll open up a larger office in Dublin and also London. Uh, Ireland's interesting because a lot of the big banks and tech companies globally run their operational centres out of Ireland. So it punches way beyond the revenue expectation, having strong sales capabilities in Dublin. So that's the short term for Europe, medium term, a year or two out. If we sign the contracts we expect to, we'll also establish an office likely in Frankfurt. But we've already got a business partner we're working through that's based in Belgium, and that will beef out our capabilities across Europe. APAC slightly different. APAC, our primary focus here is certainly engaging and realizing revenue from one of the top four in Australia. Past that, strategically, it's important for us to engage in blockchains. Now, we just don't have blockchains as a buzz because it's the pervasive sort of strategy that you read in the paper. It's very relevant for what we do today. What we will do today and how we will work with banks, by necessity, we need to have blockchain capability in the next two years. How will they work for us? Well, blockchains have two things. They got great protection because it's an encrypted number that has a representation of your business. So instead of you having to go to all the sources to find out if you are compliant, you'll have this encrypted number that maintains a live state of your business with respect to KYC. The second part of blockchains is that number will be held by us and all our partners in the network. So our partners by necessity will include banks and registers. And if a bank and a register and we can agree on the number with your business, then we know it's the right number. It's got veracity around its decision making. And it's also got efficiencies because we're not doing the data mining that we do today in our automation model. So blockchain, we certainly put apart a large amount of our funding to build up our capabilities there. And it's well underway already.